Welcome to another tutorial. In this video, we're gonna be looking at coming back to life. We're gonna be learning all of the solos, the intro, second and the third solo. And even though this is mostly pulse version, and I'm gonna be going over pulse version actually, as you can hear from this awesome pulse tone, which you can learn how to get on my Patreon, along with tabs and backing tracks, of course. But while you follow the tabs below, you might see just a few licks here and there different. That's because that's because Coming Back to Life is one of my favorite solos to play. It's always on my playlist and I play almost every version, the Pompeii, the Studio, I mean Royal Albert Hall. That's right, I might improv just a few licks here and there, but no worries, you can just watch this again and again. Uh, just follow the tabs, get the tabs, full tabs on my Patreon along with tabs and backing tracks. So without further ado, let's start. Okay, so we're on C major. Which means we can play over A minor pentatonic, if you know your circle of fifths. Okay. And give it a little vibrato. Then catch the seventh on G string. and bend it, full step. And pick it twice, and we're gonna do something like this. Something like this, with the bend of course. Let's play it again. Okay, this needs a little sustain. I know it's clean tone, but you can use a compressor, you can use the clean boost, but you need this little... You need this little magic, okay? Then for the new part, we're just gonna slide the fifth again and catch the fifth on G string. Okay, kind of similar. We're just gonna slide. Okay, before I continue, I just want to say that there aren't like tempo or metronome, well, in the intro solo actually. So you gotta listen to the song again and again and again, just to match with all the keyboard from Rick Wrights, okay? You know what I mean. There isn't a metronome here, so you gotta just be a little... You just gotta know when to pick it, okay? Something like this. You just gotta listen Rick Wrights keyboard on the backing track and play according to that. I missed this a few times too, but you just gotta listen to it again and again and again. So let's continue. Then we're gonna slap the seventh and do this little fifth on the uh, G and seventh on the D. You heard that? You're gonna bend the seventh. Very easy stuff. Very slow. Just gotta play with the tempo and the keyboard, like I said. That's all. And you heard this, right? I'm giving just a little bend here. I always do this. It adds so much, like, you know, comfortably numb. Or on the turning away. This little mini bend is so crucial. Let's play it again. You heard that? Just, just a mini. Okay. Then we're gonna bend the 7th fret here. Give it a little vibrato. Then release it and pick it again. And catch the 5th and pull off to the 4th. And slide from 5th to 7th again, okay? Okay, what we just did is 5th, 4th and 7th. You can play something like this. Like I said in the beginning of this video, you're gonna improv quite a lot. Let's play that again. Give it a little vibrato, 
Fifth, fifth, and seventh. And slide from seventh to uh, fifth on A string. And catch the third. This little mini band here again, okay? Let's play everything. Practice this at least ten times. Okay, on the second part of the first solo, I mean the intro, we're just gonna uh, catch the twelfth on a G string and bend it twice, just like we did here. Okay, and catch fifteen now on the B string and bend it. Just like the same thing we did here, without the... We're not gonna do this here. Just a full step bend. Then we're gonna slide the 12 again. Wait just a tad. And catch this. You heard that? A little off tempo, but... Well, this is how the more plays. And bend it full step okay like i said i repeat myself but i'm not gonna again uh, this is all played with the rick Wright's keyboard so there is no metronome or anything here well there is but it's not obvious so you gotta listen to the keyboard and play according to that and while we release this we're gonna catch the 12 again and bend it two times give it a little vibrato slide from 12 to 14 catch the 13 Take the fourth one again. What a cool lick. Okay, let's play this. Don't neglect the vibratos. Okay. Okay, just slide from the third to fourteen. You heard this little Okay, and this little pluff. Then we're gonna be here again. We're just gonna rake uh, till uh, the high E and the B strings on the fifth and catch the eighth on B string. Then catch the seventh and bend it full step. And we're gonna do. And we're just gonna. Okay. This is all the same. Actually, David Kimmel plays here a little different. Maybe something like this. Something like this might work. Like I said, it all depends on your improv. Just follow the tabs. I'm gonna play uh, however I tapped because I don't want to confuse you guys. So again. This is all the same as we've done. All the same. Give it a little bend now. But just the ending is different. Not like this, but here. Okay, on the low E. So let's play everything from this part, uh, and then we're just gonna go to the final part of the intro.
So we're on the final part of the intro, we're just gonna be here again and bend it full step. Okay, just a full step. Then we're just gonna slide to 14. Okay. We're just gonna pick it and wait. Then bend, okay? Okay. Now, what I want you to do is switch the bridge pickup from neck. We were on neck pickup whole time. Just to give that a little bite, we're just gonna switch the bridge like David Gilmore does. We're just gonna slide the 7th on D string. And catch the 5th and 7th. And we're gonna bend the 7th fret. Okay. And release it. Then, what I want you to do is use your middle finger here, not your uh, ring finger. Well, if you're comfortable with that, of course. But uh, what I do is, I use my middle finger here. Because I want to catch uh, the 6th fret with my pointing finger, okay? Like I said, middle finger, full step bend. Catch the 8th on the B string with my ring finger. Of course, while I do this, I mute it, okay? Not like, not like this. I mute it. And I mute these two, okay? The B strings too. And catch the uh, sixth on the B string. Then we're gonna do a quick pull off, hammer on and pull off. And we're gonna do it again. Let's play everything. David Gilmore plays a little different here. He plays a pull off and hammer on again. Uh, he might do something like this. Like this, you know, he adds something else too on the pulse record. Uh, I just want to show you the easy way, you can just improv from there. This is how I play. Okay, finishing the solo. Now we're just going to slide to the 7th. You don't pick here, okay? You just pick once. Bend. Release. Pull off. And hammer on. And on top of that, you still don't pick. Of course you can pick, but this sounds more authentic. I'm just gonna slide from 5th to 4th. Okay, then you're just gonna play C, okay? This is C2, right? This... Yeah, this is C2. And this is the end of it. So let's play this part and play the whole intro with the tabs. And then we're gonna move on to the second solo. Or something like this. So let's play everything.
I'm gonna play the chord version. <laughs> I'm gonna wear my contact lenses because it's insanely hot, it gets blurry and blurry. I don't usually wear glasses. So let's go over the second solo in just a second. I highly recommend you check out my Patreon for that awesome tone. I think it's the closest pulse tone ever. Of course, that's my opinion. So before the solo, this goes like... Da -da -da -da. Then you're gonna switch the neck pickup. Okay, you're gonna slide, start like this. So why I showed this? Because you're gonna do the exact same thing in between second and third solo, okay? So I want you to know that F, A minor, B flat, F again, A minor, G, and C. This is the start of the new bar, of course. So again, you're gonna switch the neck. You're on the C. Dun, dun, dun. Okay, just follow the tabs for the bar, you know, the C and the solo starting bar. So what you're gonna do is just like the fifth on D string, catch the fifth on uh, G string, and bat the seventh on G. Give it a little vibrato. Then you're gonna catch the eighth on B string. Okay. Just gonna bend the seven. Just uh, bend and release. Then do a pull off. Then catch the seventh on uh, D string. Okay, catch the fifth again. Then instantly you're gonna catch the eighth again and bend it. You heard that? Like I said, after this, catch the 8, then you're gonna move 2 frets down, okay, very easy, and catch the 5th on a G string, then the same fret on D string, okay? This is a little tricky with one finger, you know. You're just gonna, you know, you see, you're gonna do something like this. Okay. Then you're just gonna bend the seventh, catch the fifth again, and catch the fifth on G string again, and pick it again, and do a little pull off like this. Okay, very smooth. The tone here is just perfect. Okay, you just gotta practice that. It's a perfect lick. On the CD version, David Kilmer actually plays. But on the DVD version, which I'm more familiar with, you're just gonna pick the fifth on B string again, uh, twice. And catch the fifth on high E, okay? You heard that? Eighth and pull off. Catch the seventh instantly. Okay, this is a very blues lick actually. Something like this, but we're not gonna bend the seventh, we're just gonna pick the fifth twice because the full step this is actually this. Okay. Okay. D 
these are all very easy with the tab. You just gotta play it a couple of times and I know you're gonna master it. Then you're gonna wait just a second and slide the seventh, okay? Wait. Okay. Okay, wait a little. Then slide the seventh. Okay. And uh, I showed earlier. Just do this little mini band, okay? Then for the new part. This is again bluesy. So let's play everything and move on to the next part, okay? Sorry I didn't mention this, but... Just gonna cool, awesome. Play that at least ten times. Okay, for the part two, we're just gonna slide to twelve. Without the bar finishing, just check the tab. We're just gonna slide the 12, catch the 13 on B, catch the 12 again. Then we're gonna move two frets and catch the 15th. Catch the 12 again. Okay, bar starts right here. Okay, just a very easy. Okay, then after this big band, you're just gonna catch the 15 on high E, okay? With your pinky. Okay, give it a little. After this, just this mini band, you're gonna catch the 15 instantly. Okay. Bend it once and bend it again. And bend and release. Okay. And pick it one more time. Then do a pull off. Just like we did here. Okay. Okay. I love the solo because you're doing this, what you did here, here. Okay, so that's why I love the song. You, should, you can just copy everything you did here and implement it here. You can improv on it, you can just, it's a beautiful solo. So let's play this part again. Then you're gonna catch the 13 on B again and slide to 15. Okay. Then catch the 12 again with your uh, pointing finger, okay? And now you're gonna skip the B string, go straight to the G string, okay? Okay. What I like to do is give it a little. Okay. You don't have to do this, but I like doing it. Just a little half step bend, okay? And now the new part. 
Now, you're just gonna be here on the 20th, actually this is A minor 2. Just one octave higher. You're just gonna pick the 20, pick the 20 once, and bend the 19, half step. Just pick and bend, and do a pre-bend, half step bend of course. Okay. And then bend it again and release. And then pick the 19 again and pull for the 17. Now we're just gonna do a quick lick. It's a little fast, I know, other strings might interfere, so I want you to uh, practice this and mute the other strings. So we're gonna start with the hammer on the 19. Then with your middle finger, you catch, you catch the 20th on your B string. Okay, 17, 19, 20 on the B, and 17 on the high E again. Okay, now we're on the B string again, on the 17th. That was bad. Okay. And you're just gonna keep this just a second and slide down. Then you're gonna slide to 14 and we're finishing the middle solo. Just gonna slide to 14 and catch the 13. And catch the 15th, okay? Okay. You're gonna bend the 15 and you're gonna mute it like this and catch the 15 without bending. Okay. Just like so. So let's play part two again and then I'm gonna play all the middle solo from start to finish without interruption. Okay, if you're to this part, thank you for watching it. Please consider Patreon for the tone, tap, backing track, and vote for the next one. Uh, I just want to say something here. On the third solo, I play just a little different than David Gilmour does. I mentioned this in the beginning, but I want to mention it again just to get out of confusion. I'm going to play a little different. I may play a little different than Taps 2. Like I said, I love this song. I play it all the time. I may play different here and there. Uh, you can just follow the tabs. You could just follow my playing. But I don't want you to get confused. So I wanted to mention that. So let's start with the third solo. <laughs> You're on bridge pickup for this solo. And solo starts, you're gonna slide the seventh. And catch the fifth on B and G, B and high E. Then you're gonna bend the eighth on the B string, okay? Catch the fifth on the high E again. Then you're gonna climb down the scale, okay? 
I'm trying to remember the taps. Like I said, you can just develop your own style, your own licks too. <laughs> You can do something like this, just follow the taps. We've done something like this like 20 times maybe. I'm gonna keep going on. Okay. You can do something like this too. Just follow the taps, all A minor pentatonic, okay? Okay, now for the new part, we're just gonna slide the 7th on the uh, A string. We can do something like this, just slide the 7th. Do a hammer and a pull off. Then do a double stop. Something like this, or... Or something like this, just follow the tabs. Something like this might work. Something like this might work. Okay, but in the end, I want you to do... Okay. Okay, I hope this part was clear. It sounds a little confusing in my head, so I'm gonna play from start. Okay, so the last thing we do is do this, and then we're gonna be here, okay? This famous coming back to life riff. This is actually D shape, okay? Something like this. You play this D, right? What I want you to do is come here. Okay? 12, 13, 12. So what is this actually? This is actually C. Okay? Okay, the rhythm part here is actually very important, so I'm gonna mute this. You see? You're gonna do something like this, just mute the strings. Okay, now I'm gonna add C here. You heard this? I'm just gonna mute it, pick it, and mute it again. You heard that? Same pattern. On the third one, you're just gonna add your pinky to the 15th, okay? Okay. You heard that? Okay. Please practice this part. The rhythm part here is extremely important. So after this, I want you to use your pointing finger here, bar the 15th tone high E and B string. Do something like this, slide to 17 and slide back. Okay. Let's play this part and I'm gonna change the battery. Something like this, okay? So let's play everything from the top. After this, I do a little... Something like this, you don't have to, I like it. Then... Okay, then you're gonna be on the 20th again.
But I want you to mute the top strings except the high E, you know, the B and G. Something like this, okay? I want you to do this. And you do a big full step bend here, okay? Then you're gonna release. You just bend it a couple of times. Do a pull off and uh, pick the 20th again. Give it a little vibrato. Okay. Then what I want you to do is something like this, okay? Okay. Nineteen. And then we're gonna do a quick hammer on pull-off. Okay. After this, I want you to pick the 17th again. Pick the 17th again and catch the 20th on the B string. Then you're gonna slide the 14. Okay, we've done this like a thousand times. Pick the 15 and catch the high E. Then I want you to do this. It's a little hard, I admit. Uh, you could just play something else too. Something like this might work. Something like this might work. Let's play the tab version again. After this, I'm just gonna bend the 15 on B, catch the high E, uh, I don't want you to mute this, I don't want you to mute this, I want this to be chaotic tone. You heard that? A little chaotic, they interfere. Because I want you to pick both of them again. Something like this. Then you're just gonna do okay like I said this is all improv you can do something like this something like this something like this Something like this all depends on you. Let's play this part. Okay, now to end this part, we're just gonna do something like this, okay? Still, it all depends on you. You can do something like this, or just on the tabs, or something like this. Something like this. Now we're just gonna play everything from this part and go to the final part, okay?
is a very long part. I admit, I'm sorry. I didn't realize it was that long. But uh, we've done all of these licks a couple of times, so uh, I think you're used to it. I mean, I hope that's true. So let's finish this song. <laughs> This part actually, the, the last part actually, is very very, you know, uh, improvisation optimal, like I said, if that's even a word, excuse my English. So you're just gonna keep up with the tempo, play a bunch of coming back to life licks, like... Something like this, you know, or you can just play uh, on the tabs probably. Something like this, you know? Rake. We did this on the intro, remember? Of course, we did it once, now we're just going twice. Okay. Something like this. What a cool lick. Reminds me of Machine Gun, you know? Okay. You're just gonna slide the seventh. Catch the fifth. And you're gonna skip the D string now, go straight to the G. And finish it with the, you know, A. Yeah, D on the seventh, which is A. Okay, let's play it again. And slide down. Something like this might work. What I did is just classic coming back to life riffs. After a couple of notes here, we're just gonna slide to the 10th, catch the 8th on the high E, and bend the 10th on high E, full step. Something like this. I encourage you to watch my cover, you know. Just about to finish. You can do something like this. I know, I apologize, this is not 100% correct to the tabs or pulse version, but I want to give you an idea how to play it so you can improvise on it, uh, develop your own style. Honestly, I can't remember how I played on the cover or how I wrote it properly on the tabs. You can access to all of them below. We have one more lick to go. We're just gonna be here. This is classic coming back to life ending, okay? Actually, David Kimmer plays something like this, you know, uh, on the Royal Albert Hall, 2016. 2006. So what I do in the tab is, or on my cover is... Something like this, okay? This little slide is important. You're on the 6th here with your middle finger and your 5th on the uh, G string with your pointing finger. Something like this. You can add variations of this. You can do something like this. Or you can just... Or you can do something like this. So I'm gonna play the third solo from start to finish without any interruptions and then we're gonna finish this video, okay?
Whew. I hope that was clear. I know the last part was a little different. I apologize for that. I want to teach you the basics of coming back to life so you can improv. I honestly don't remember 100%, but the intro and the second solo are perfect, right? If you're interested in the tone, which is by far the best on YouTube in my opinion, I wouldn't share it otherwise. You should head over to my Patreon for tabs, backing tracks, tones for clean and overdriven tones. You can vote for the next tutorial. And if you're interested in more tutorials, check out this playlist. I publish new tutorials every week. Also, don't forget to watch my tone guides, pedals, yada 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 pedal reviews, everything. I'll see you guys again in the next one.